Welcome back to the Fire Burns Within channel. I've been missing in action. I haven't been doing my videos for a good while now. Um, I don't know, you can call it channel apathy if you like. The views are going <laughs> less and less on the channel, so I don't know. Just didn't feel like doing any videos. Uh, but anyway, here I am. I'm going to do a video. I mean... The month is nearly over. I should really wait until the end of the month and do my top 10 albums of um, April. But I decided to do this little review video. I mean, I've been listening to a stack of albums. Just because I'm not doing videos don't mean I don't listen to albums. I love metal. I love music too much not to listen to metal, not to listen to it, not to listen to rock. And I've been listening to a stack of the stuff. Absolute stacks. I'm going to mention them quickly. I'm not going to talk too much. First one is Omnicidal. The Omnicidal is these guys play melodic death metal. I'm not sure where they're from. They could be Swedish. I'm, I'm really not sure. This was a good album. It was just okay. 7 out of 10. Next one is Rise of the North Star and Showdown. Rise of the North Star is French hardcore or rapcore almost. French heavy hardcore. Big, big heavy riffs. It's sort of like a guilty pleasure for me, this one. Um, I, I mean, hardcore and whatever new metal rapcore is very, very far from what I enjoy, but this was okay, and I've been sort of getting into some of their older songs, uh, but I was expecting to like this a bit more, but in the end, just a 7 out of 10. Next one is Sintage and Paralyzing Chains. Sintage is just traditional heavy metal, I think. The only problem with this one is the vocalist, he's, he's just not good. He's not good. But the album still gets a 7 out of 10 from me. His voice is just weird. It's sort of shrieky and annoying. But the riffs are really good and the songs are solid. So 7 out of 10. Next one is Jethro Tal, Rock Flotta. It gets a 7.5 out of 10 from me. It's pretty similar to Zealot Gene. Uh, I can't remember what I gave the Zealot Gene. I might have given it an 8. Which I was, I think, overrating it. Uh, I would say it's probably a 7. This is probably a little bit better than the Zealot Gene. It seems a little bit more, I don't know, just more more coherent. He's still got a few flaws, though. I mean, Ian's voice is not the best, but I like the songs. The songs are quite enjoyable, so Tal gets a 7.5. Next one is Lordy, Screamwriters Guild. Uh, this is solid. It's just a regular Lordy album. It's Lordy doing what they do, you know, there's no surprises on this one. It's a fun listen, uh, 7.5 out of 10. Next one is Metallica 72 Seasons, reviewed on the channel. Uh, it's it's a good Metallica album, 7.5 out of 10. Next one is Raider, Trial by Chaos. Raider plays thrash metal, but with sort of death metal-ish vocals, uh, or sort of heavy growl vocals. He actually sounds a bit like Randy Blythe uh, from Lamb of God, whose voice I don't really like, but he's okay. But the riffs in Radar are very good. Very good production, very good riffs. So 7.5 out of 10. Next one is Vanish, A Hint of Solace. Vanish plays sort of mix between power metal, melodic metal, a little bit of progressive elements. Uh, this was good. This is solid. Uh, vocalist is solid. He's good. He's not amazing, but he is good. He's very good. Uh, music is heavily produced. It's melodic. It's just the songs are not always there, but it is very solid. So 7.5 out of 10. Next one is Archon Angel and the two album or... The symbol for two. It's their second album. Archon Angel is a Frontiers project fronted by Zach Stevens. 
this is very good this is very solid it's melodic heavy metal it's just very good Zach sounds good songs are solid 8 out of 10 next one is Frenzy of Hoods and Masks Frenzy plays uh, traditional heavy metal little bit in the neoclassical style well not so much neoclassical the shred metal style let's call it uh you know little bit racer x i've heard that comment in the the video the video on youtube for the full album someone called it like racer x and it's pretty close i, I really like the frenzy album actually bass is very prominent the singer's not the best but it's workmanlike it, it will do uh, the album gets an 8 out of 10 from me. Next one is Itinerum, and the album is called Dream and Fly. Itinerum is a female-fronted symphonic power metal band. This is really good. Her vocals are good. The songs are good. Um, solid album. I mean, they're not well-known at all. I mean, I'm not the first I've ever come across them. This is very good. 8 out of 10. Uh, next one is Revolution Saints. Eagle Flight Revolution Saints is a melodic rock slash AOR project with Dean Castronovo now. Joe Hoekstra now. He's taken over from um, Doug Aldrich, I think it was. Basically, it's like a journey album, uh, and it's very good. I mean, it's solid. It's the ballads are a little bit too much for my taste, but it, it's good. So I get a seven point five out of ten from me. Next one is Mesro. Summon thy demons, Mesro. I think they are Swedish. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But they haven't released an album for Yonks, this band. It's sort of like a comeback. They they play melodic thrash metal. This is this is really good. I, I thought this was wicked. I really enjoyed this. The riffing, the production, awesome stuff. Uh, if you like melodic thrash, then definitely check out Mesro. Um, the album gets an 8.5 out of 10 from me. Next one is Overkill and Scorched. Overkill, uh, God knows what number album this is, uh, 20th, I think. Uh, this is Overkill in their modern day best, I think. This is the best album since I Am Bound. It's not quite as good as I Am Bound, but it's solid. It is rock, rock solid. It's very, very good. Eight out of ten. Next one is Syntropy, and the album is called Ritual Sycophancy. I don't know anything about this band, Syntropy. They play technical death metal. I thought this was really solid, really, really good. Great, heavy, groovy riffs, rock solid, 8 out of 10. Right, next is Angus Mc6, Angus Mc6. And the Sword of Power. This is the kind of stuff I love, obviously. Super, super cheesy power metal from the ex Glory Hammer vocalist. But it's done so well. It's done so well. It's so fun. The choruses are huge, as you would expect, because uh, the um, organ, organ guy, uh, Sieb, he's responsible for, I guess, writing most of the music, along with, of course, Thomas, the ex-Glory Hammer singer, but the, the songs are just fun, serious fun. You know, he just carries on where he left off with Glory Hammer, but obviously in a whole new light, he's dropped the hammer and picked up the Sword of Power. Okay, uh, next is, uh, let me get this, I've, I've talked so much, I've lost some track. Next is Anthem, Crimson and Jet Black. Anthem is long-running Japanese heavy metal band with shredding solos. 
This is probably their best album ever. I thought this was absolutely awesome. This is killer. Melodic, heavy metal, fast, heavy riffs, shredding leads, solid vocals for a Japanese guy. I really enjoyed this. 8.5 out of 10. Next one is a debut album by a band called Ashrain and it's called Requiem Reloaded. Ashrain is, I think, led by a Japanese guy. I forget what band he's from. Um, I think he's the guitarist in Psy, the black metal band. This is his sort of power metal side project. <laughs> it's bloody awesome. It's incredibly bloody awesome. Can't believe how good it is for a debut. I mean, it's just wicked. It's just everything is very good. The production is very good. Songwriting very, very good. Um, nothing to fault here. What a debut! Eight point five out of ten. Right, uh, three albums still to talk, and I've already gone past the ten minute barrier. I'm on eleven minutes. So I better quickly do this because otherwise this will get zero views. It's not going to get many views anyway. But anyway, let me shut up and talk about these last three albums. Uh, the first one is Mecca Everlasting. Mecca is an AOR band, unashamed 80s style AOR. This is really very good. I mean... I love this. This is the production is really nice, crisp, clean. The vocalist is very good. The songwriting is very, very good. Um, I love this. It's soft, but it's AOR. What do you expect? It's you know, it's got enough weight to keep things enticing, exciting. The songs are really good. Riffs good. Solos good. Vocals good. Eight point five out of ten. Two albums to talk about before I leave you in peace. First one is Saint Demon, League of the Serpent. Saint Demon is Swedish melodic power metal, the kind of stuff I lap up. These guys have been missing for quite a while, but they came back and how? And how? This is really, really very good. Melodic, heavy power metal. If you like power metal, just go and listen to Saint Demon and don't listen to me talking about it. Just go and listen to it. 8.5 out of 10. But it's not the best album of this roundup. And it's likely to be the best album of the month, almost certainly, because I can't see anything else beating it now. So when I do the album of the month video, I'm basically giving the winner of the album of the month away in this review. And it is... Magnus Carlsen's Free Fall, Hunt the Flame. I don't know if I've talked about Magnus on this station. I'm sure I have many, many times. He he writes regular albums for Frontiers. He's like one of their stable stars, if you will, along with, say, uh, Ali Del Vecchio and um, Eric, of course, Eric Martin, Martinson. Um, Magnus, he writes about three or four albums a year, I think, for Frontiers. At least two or three, anyway. Uh, you know, this Free Fall is his solo album. He uses different singers, different, uh, different. Well, they're they're all fairly similar styles, but there's you can tell between them. He uses a great bunch of singers this time. The songs are just awesome. I love the songs. The songs just stay in your ear. So catchy. So damn catchy. Production is rock solid, heavy. Magnus's solos are killer. Just the songs are memorable. This is this is what I love about melodic heavy metal, melodic rock, melodic music in general. You got to make the songs memorable, and this is what Magnus is great at. So that album gets a nine out of ten. I was gonna give it actually nine point five because I love it too much, but. I settled for a 9 out of 10. Okay, that's it. All right. Stay tuned for the album of the month video for April, which is not long now, a few days by the end of, uh, you know, we've got holidays coming up, May Day, May the 1st, so I'll have time to record 
the album of the month for April. Okay, laters, bye.